just installed Proxmox and you're ready to get it set up and make sure that everything is up to date and good to go so that you can start running your home lab and it all work the way you need to. Well, here are the six steps that I take every time I install Proxmox. I'm actually doing it multiple times tonight so that, that way I can build me a cluster, but this will work even if you're not doing a cluster. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. So once you've got Proxmox installed, if you don't know how to install Proxmox, I will link a video somewhere up here, however, wherever it is. But go ahead and watch that and then come back to this video. But let's go ahead and jump into our Proxmox server. So to do that, we are just going to navigate to the IP address of what our Proxmox server is. Mine is 10100.1.21 and then port 8006 and press enter we're going to get you are not connected privately we just installed this and we know that it's safe and it's, we're going to click advance and proceed we're going to log in with root and the password that you use that you set up when you were doing the install first thing you're going to see is you do have this you do not have a valid subscription now one way to get rid of this is to go buy a valid subscription from proxmox but if right now you're just testing proxmox out and doing and wanting to set up your home lab, that is perfectly okay. We'll go ahead and get rid of that nag here in a little bit. But Proxmox is up and running. Now, kind of show you a little bit around it. In Shell, this is the command line. Um, you can do a lot of things from here. Like I could do my apt get upgrade or update. But if we pay attention down here, we've got some fails failed to fetch enterprise we're going to go ahead and change that as long as you're not doing the subscription if you're doing the subscription and you have a subscription license it would go ahead and up this but this is just for the non-subscription one so what i like to do is because there is a lot of, quite a bit of copying and pasting in this i'm going to use terminal that is my favorite ssh tool so let's go ahead and bring that over and what we're going to do is we're going to ssh root at our IP address. We're going to accept that it makes a fingerprint and we're going to type in yes. We're going to put in that password also again. Now one thing that I always do like to do is I like to make sure that I have the correct name server. And the reason for this is because most sometimes if you don't have the correct name server, you're not going to be able to do the downloads because it's not going to, be able to reach the internet. There is one way to check that. We can just ping Google. Make sure that it'll come back that it's getting a reply. It looks like it is getting a reply. But if you're not, let me show you how to go ahead and fix that. Go in and we're going to type in this nano forward slash etc resolve.conf. We're going to make sure right here that we have a name server that is valid for your network so this is my dhcp server and this is my dns but if there was not a dns right there i can also put a secondary one in here so let's just go ahead and do that i'm going to just put cloud flares i'm going to hit Control x y and enter the next thing we need to do is we need to update our our no subscription repository so to do that, we're going to edit this. Now you can do all of this from the GUI, but I really do like just doing it from the command line. One, I get to see things, get to kind of play around, type, and understand really how everything is working. We're going to use Nano. Now Nano is a editing tool for that. There is other ones out there like Vim or VI. I don't know. Nano I like the best. And let me know down in the comments what you really like. Do you like Nano or do you prefer the other ones if there are other ones let me know because i know like vim or vi is really complicated and i don't know all the commands for that one we're going to come right here we're going to press enter we're going to leave these three lines in here press enter one more time once we get down to the bottom and we're going to paste in this right here from the future so i realized that i did not tell y'all in the description below i will have a link to where you can actually go to my website and copy and paste all of the commands that I'm putting into this video. I know that pausing the video and trying to type all this out can be complicated, but let's go ahead and get it back into the video so that way you can get your Proxmox set up and start running your first VM or get your cluster set up. You see right here, it does have this HTTP, downloadproxmox.com, 
forward slash Debian PBE bookworm PBE no subscription. We need to make sure that we have that no subscription so that we can get the correct update. We can get control X, Y, and enter once again. Now, the next thing we need to do is disable our enterprise repository so that it doesn't look at that. So to do that, we are going to go to nano forward slash etc app sources list dot D forward slash PVE dash enterprise dot list. We're going to comment this out. Don't delete it. Just comment it out. It won't look at it. Um, your comment right there. The comment, the one good great thing about that is this is human readable. So I can put something like in here. I could tab this down and I could say PVE enterprise. So that way I know that this is the, in the PV enterprise repository, or I can put something like, like, and subscribe. Now, like I said, Proxmox is not going to read it. Linux is not going to read it. If it's got that, um, pound sign right there or hashtag, whatever you want to call it, we're going to press control X, Y and enter. The next thing we need to do is edit our Ceph list. Now, what Ceph is, is that is really a shared storage between nodes or between clusters. If you are planning on doing a cluster of Proxmox server, this is something that I highly suggest. Even if you're not planning on doing a Proxmox server, let's go ahead and update that so that you know when you decide to bring in your Proxmox cluster, because eventually you will, you know that Ceph is already set up. So we're going to go to nano etc apt sources dot list dot d forward slash ceph list. We're going to comment out this one because that is the enterprise. And we are going to add in this. And we're going to go control x y and enter. The biggest thing you'll see is one is from HTTPS and the other one is from HTTP. They are perfectly safe, even though it does come from the HTTP. Now we can update it. So we shouldn't get any of those errors that we're getting. So to do that, we're going to do apt get update and, and apt get upgrade dash Y. The reason I'm running the dash Y is it will just go ahead and do all this without me having to press enter and it's stopping. So with a little bit of movie magic, I'll see you when this is done installing. Once it, once you see root at PVE one or whatever the name of your Proxmox server is, you can you are good to go and it is updated. I'm just going to go ahead and clear this out. Now we are going to set up. PCI pass through. This is a great source or great tool to have as long as your device will support it. You will just need to make sure that all of the stuff is set up inside of BIOS. By default, it should work as long as your computer is at least like five years old and you should be good to go. If it doesn't work and you're not able to pass through PCI, I'll link a description. I'll link in the description if I can find it on what you need to look at for Intel and AMD. So to do that for us to upgrade or to enable PCI pass through, we are going to go to nano etc default or e forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash crow. We're going to press enter. We're going to come down here and we're going to comment out this line where it says grub command line, Linux default quiet. We're going to cover out that or comment out that one. And on the next line, we're going to put in this. So we're just going to kind of copy this one, but we're putting in this in Intel underscore I M I O M M U equals on I O M M U equals P T parentheses. The reason I just like to comment things out so that way if I ever have to change anything, it's already there and things like that. 
You hit Control X, Y, and Enter again. And then we are going to do Upgrade, Update. Update, dash, grub. Going to generate the file. Next thing we need to do is we need to add some modules in there so that it knows what to do. We're going to go to nodes forward slash etc forward slash modules. There is really nothing here, but we're going to add in three lines. Add in those lines and then we're going to go ahead and save it. Now we can reboot. So to do reboot, we're just going to go in and re hit reboot now. It'll only take your Proxmox server a couple minutes to come back up. And if you want to know when your Proxmox server comes back up, what you can do is run a ping dot I, the IP address and then run a continuous ping, which would be dash T. So normally with Windows, because I'm running on Windows, it only does four pings, but you can run a continuous one with dash T so that you know that it's up. So you can see mine is up pretty quick. I'm going to just hit control C, which will clear that out. We're going to go ahead and clear this back out. And we're going to go ahead and re-log back into our Proxmox server. Now, we still got that annoying nag. And I'm going to show you how to go ahead and get rid of it. You can keep it if you want to, but sometimes I, I just like to have it so that I can just jump right into my Proxmox server. So to do that, we're going to Go back to our terminal. We're going to SSH back into it. So we're going to do SSH root at our IP address. We'll put in that password one more time. And then we're going to paste in this command. We're going to go and press enter. It will take it a couple minutes. You might see up there that it said connection lost or connection closed. That is okay. What we're going to do, we're going to log out, is we're going to clear our history, or clear our, our cache. So I'm going to just clear the last hour, so it'll clear all the cache data. Once you have cleared the cache data, go ahead and refresh. You're going to get the, the connection that's not private again, go ahead and click advanced. We're going to type in our pat our root and the password. And now we have no net. We have we don't have that. You don't have a valid subscription. Now that Proxmox is all set up and fully up to date, we can start playing around with Proxmox by creating your first VM. If you want to see how to create your first VM, go ahead and I will link one of the videos over here somewhere, wherever they go. And then the uh, if you are interested in setting up a cluster, I'm going to be dropping that video very soon. I'm actually about to install Proxmox on my third node and get that all up and running. I'll also do some Ceph and anything like that. But if you like content like this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.